Hi again the guys and welcome to another installment of Beards and Cars. For those who have not clicked on this series before, it's my podcast style layout. It tends to be a more discussion based series where we get into topics and predictions and countdowns, personal favourites, that kind of stuff. And for this particular installment it was a video topic which I wasn't 100% sure about doing. Not because it wasn't worth doing but because it's potentially a little bit more of a grey area than we typically talk about. Now, I always put the time codes of the topic points in these episodes in the description below. So if you want to jump around through the video, you can do that if you want to. The reason why I'm saying that is because I think there's a very small tangential point which needs to be discussed about a video like this. Because sometimes I see people make comments on especially these beards and cars topics, such as NASCAR coming back, Formula E coming back, um, Super Formula now, even various other things. And people act like the videos are clickbait. And the point that I wanted to make clear, because it definitely applies to this episode, is Yes, I do use clickbait, and I 100% support anyone on YouTube who wishes to use clickbait. On the caveat that clickbait is not actually what you have a problem with. And for those people who hate clickbait, hear me out. There is nothing wrong with clickbait. The reason why it annoys you so much is when it's not backed up by proof or fact in the video itself. Because if you put a bright, shiny thumbnail that attracts attention, that's not clickbait. It's marketing. And newspapers have been doing that for far longer than the internet has. So there's nothing fundamentally wrong with it as long as you actually give the audience what the thumbnail promises. And that is the crucial difference that I've always tried to have between my channel and many others who use clickbait as well, because often it is not backed up. It's just sensationalized headlines to grab views and clicks. And check out those videos, you'll often see a disproportionate amount of dislikes. That's what I've never done. If I say something in the title and the thumbnail, as long as you've read it properly, which isn't that difficult if you can speak English, It's exactly what it says on the tin. I don't say NASCAR is definitely coming back to Gran Turismo. It's phrased as a question. Is NASCAR coming back? I don't make claims if I don't have the evidence to back it up, basically. So that's just something that I wanted to slightly interject into this topic because, much more specifically to this particular video, this is one of those topics which seems to be a hugely important one to the community, for sure. But at the same time, it has far less evidence to support it than many of the other topics that I've talked about. For instance, Formula E has been openly discussed. NASCAR is in the credits of the game. So these things have a pretty hefty amount of sometimes circumstantial, sometimes uh, actual evidence to back them up. On this occasion, it's much, much more grey and shallower, you could say, in terms of evidence. However, the evidence that we do have should not be discredited because... Whenever anyone asks me, do I think we're going to get rain, or in other words, weather, in GT Sport, the same answer that I always give is, well, we've had wet weather tyres in the game from day one. That is by far the single most powerful piece of evidence to support the fact that we at the very least could, if not will, get weather in the game at some point. However, I wanted to make that clear because as far as I know, that's pretty much the only evidence that we have to point to that being the case. Everything else points to it being probably not anytime soon. And I say that because look how long the game's been out and look how many updates we've had. We haven't even come close to adding features to the game. Every single update has added races, cars, and tracks. They have not added new features to the game. They haven't added tuning. They haven't added oil changes. They haven't added weather. Those are features that I'm talking about. They've added stuff in career mode, in the Nations Cup kind of stuff, obviously new cars and new tracks, and that's pretty much it. We don't get those smaller features. So, so far, there is pretty much zero precedent to get something like weather included, simply because we haven't had anything like that included so far in either the base game or any of the updates. However, that does not mean it's not going to happen. And of course, the evidence that I said still stands. Those tyres are in the game. In fact, I believe we have both intermediate and wet tyres. 
both of which you pretty much never use currently, and the fact that they put them in the game shows that they at least had intent to do so. Now, some people will probably swing completely the other way and think, well, I didn't realise that. If we've got rain tyres in the game, or, or wet tyres, that's pretty much definite proof. We must be getting weather. Why else would they put it in the game? That is a very admirably naive view, and I certainly wish I could feel that way as well, but the simple fact is, having something like a feature or some small moniker indicating things to come in a Gran Turismo game really doesn't mean very much. Just think back to Gran Turismo 6. Go into the VGT dealership and I'll give you two examples. One, look at how many manufacturers there are under the Vision GT program. Now look at how many we actually got. And even up until this point now, think of how long it's been since we had a Vision GT car added. Now I know a lot of people don't care for them, but a lot of us do, and we haven't seen one in months. In fact, we've seen barely any beyond the day one release of Gran Turismo Sport. So having that dealership on all of those manufacturers in the game didn't really amount to much because we haven't had that many added at all. The second thing, which also feeds into this measure your expectations kind of side of the argument, is that in that very same Vision GT dealership, the, the thing that annoyed me the most about it, and I've talked about this before ages and ages ago on the channel, is that if you look in each of those dealerships in GT6, such as the SRT Vision GT dealership, the Lambo, the Nike, whatever the case may be, every single vehicle that was released has a detailed interior shown in the menu of that dealership in the background. Look in the background behind the Peugeot, there's an interior. Look at the Mercedes, it has an interior. So the fact that all of those cars, literally every single one of them had an interior and none of them actually did when you drove them apart from what, the Chaparral and the Tomahawk, and that was about it. All the others were black inside. So again, the fact that evidence was in the game in that circumstance, a ton of evidence, it meant next to nothing, because they just didn't even bother to give the cars interiors. So that is why I would say that, yes, on the one hand, factually speaking, we do have wet weather tyres in GT Sport. So consider that, at the very least, a nod toward that direction. But try to measure your hopes and expectations based on the track record of polyphony, because that is what makes me hold back a little bit from saying that it's a definitive yes. Now, if those things hadn't happened, I would of course say, well, it's in the game, so of course it's going to happen. But because those things haven't happened before, I would say don't get too excited. However, it is nice to have those tyres in the game, because at the very least it shows that they had intent, if not still do, to implement that into the game. So, again, this is why I wanted to talk about the more clickbait side of things, because this is a far more open discussion. This is no way near as conclusive or as definitive as stuff like Super Formula, NASCAR, Formula E, etc., that looks to be definitely coming to the game, or very strongly supported to be coming to the game with a lot of evidence. This is not that occasion. This is a much more open discussion with a tiny amount of evidence, a lot of circumstantial behavior from Polyphony in the past to weigh it up against, and also your thoughts. So one of the things that I wanted to touch on as well in this video was that I find it actually quite intriguing how important this seems to be to so many people, because I must admit, it's not that important to me. Now maybe the people who find weather to be extremely important and like their number one most wanted thing, because there really are tons of comments, not just on my channel, but on others too, even on the trailers for the updates on the official PlayStation YouTube channel, the Gran Turismo channel, you always see these comments of people saying, we want rain, we want weather. So it's clearly on the mind of quite a few people, and it seems to be getting more and more people with each update, even more so than the classic asking for DC2 Integras and Sylvias to be added to the game, which used to be the dominating comments. So people clearly want it. It's very, very high on the priority list for many people. I find that intriguing, because of all the things that you could be begging for and shouting for, weather is not one that I would have put high on the list if I was predicting them. For the community, I mean, in terms of what they want, I would have thought that far more people would be clamouring to have visual tuning return, or even, I mean, let's be honest, a proper tuning shop 
period, <laughs> let alone visual tuning. We don't have upgrade parts currently, which is so strange for a Gran Turismo game. We've always had that, but now it's gone. So for me, visual tuning, performance parts are easily, infinitely more important than weather will ever be for my driving experience, but it intrigues me, it really does, how many people are so interested in getting rain. Because it always seems to be rain as well. People never ask for snow, or for sleet, or for ice, or for, you know, I don't know, uh, autumn windy leaves blowing around the track or whatever. It's always rain. I find that intriguing. I get it, because obviously it adds a level of challenge to the game, but at the same time, I think that those people maybe are new to the franchise, because in the past of Gran Turismo we've had rain before, and, spoiler alert, I didn't really see many people using it. But of course that's one of the principles of good business, even McDonald's does it. Take something away, and everyone wants it. That's what they do every year with the McRib. So if McDonald's can do it with people's stomachs and what they want to eat, of course Polyphony can do it by taking away something like weather, because as soon as you take something away, even something that wasn't hugely popular to begin with, people immediately want it back. And you can see that with certain cars and tracks as well. Sometimes it really surprises me what the community clamours over. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's strange, and for me this is a little bit more on the side of strange. I get why you want weather, but I don't really get why people work into such a frenzy over it. Do I hope we'll get it? Yes, but I must admit, in a more selfless sense, I kind of hope that we get it for the benefit of those people who clearly want it so much. For me personally, I honestly don't care too much. If we never get weather in the game, I will be perfectly fine. I played through Gran Turismo 1, 2, 3, and 4, without missing weather in the slightest. So for me, it's fine. And Forza has barely ever had weather, and I never missed it in that franchise either. I never even use weather that much when it is an option. So for me, it's not one of those things that I miss or that I clamor for. But for those who do, I hope that you're satisfied. I hope that they do add it. And at least, if you do want to hold on to hope, there is that circumstantial evidence, decent evidence, of the tires being included. So, of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. What are your predictions? Do you think we will get those tyres? Or, or not those tyres. <laughs> Do you think we will get that weather, even, to go with the tyres? If so, what kind of weather do you think? Do you think it will apply to all of the circuits? Or do you think it will be more like Gran Turismo 6, where it was only select tracks? Generally, the ones that could be turned from day to night. Whereas now, of course, most of the tracks can be turned from day to night. So, will that be a factor? But overall, I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course, have lots of discussion down below, doubtless some arguments as well, and that's it for this instalment. So of course, if you like this kind of conversational video, check out the previous episodes, there are a ton of them, and they're always good in terms of the comments and discussions as well. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.